So without question, the Marine Corps really is focused on the fight in Afghanistan and winning that fight. That is what the entire kind of uh, institutional focus is on right now, as it should be. But we are now starting really to think about what the post-Afghanistan Marine Corps might look like. Now, although I can't give you specifics, I want to tell you six things that I think are certain to kind of define the character of the future Marine Corps. Besides, of course, its warrior ethos and its just first-to-fight mentality. First, the Marine Corps, the future Marine Corps, is going to more reflect its naval character. Now, Vince and Southwest uh, uh, Asia, over the past seven years, have kind of conspired to keep the Marines focused on sustained land combat, which goes to Marin's comment of the Secretary of Defense, where he says, essentially, we've been a second land army for quite some time. The Marines have been a second land army. But the last three commandants and their guidance to the Marine Corps have said, we really want to start getting back to our naval heritage and our naval roots. Now, second, and I'll leave uh, General Flynn to talk about this if you're interested, is the equipment density list uh, will be higher than our pre-war equipment distance density list. Now, these, this is the amount of equipment that a force takes to combat. Third, the future Marine Corps, along with the Navy, is going to re uh, rely increasingly on unmanned systems. Uh, Secretary Mabus, the Secretary in the Navy, is going to be unveiling uh, a wide initiative on unmanned systems, and the Marines have been instrumental in establishing that vision, and the things that they are thinking about doing are really quite exciting. Fourth, the future Marine Corps is going to be much more energy efficient than today. I just received a clip from the 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. They were out they have these little solar uh, panels that go out in the field with them. They set up their little solar field. At the time I saw the input, they had been operating without any external energy for over 130 hours. Fifth, the future Marine Corps is going to need to be lighter. As Secretary Gates said, over the last seven years, the Marine Corps has become more and more like a second land army only because of the requirements in the particular theaters they're fighting in. But it is clear that Marine units are heavier across the board. And this is going to be important for us to tackle. But finally, and what I want to spend the remainder of my time on, really, is that the future Marine Corps, closely supported by the US Navy and the joint team, is going to be capable of conducting amphibious assaults and conducting joint forcible entry operations. I, when you talk about how much standoff range we're going to need for an amphibious um, uh, landing, you know, the, the, will the EFV come into, the, into play on that, or is, is the indications that some people think that EFV is already a dead, dead duck in regards of how the uh, trials out in, in California t uh, turn out. But what's, what's the thinking on where the EFV plays into your amphibious capabilities? I th in fact, I need to, you know, doing a forcible entry capability or an amphibious assault capability is not an inexpensive proposition. The V-22 essentially costs about the same right now as a KC-130J. Uh, the Marines are going to buy 360 of them. So the Marines are going to have an equivalent of about 430 KC-130s. But 360 of them are going to be able to land vertically, go very fast, and land on ships. That is a tremendous capability. Provides you with an awful lot of different options. But it's expensive. Uh, EFE is very expensive. Amphibious ships are expensive. The problem that the Secretary and I both wrestle with every day is, what is the best capacity you can get for the money that we think we can, uh, can expect? And it's a trade-off every single day. I consider the day a success when everyone leaves a meeting pissed off. If anybody leaves happy, I need to take more money from them. Uh, so it's just a very, it's a struggle on every one of our uh, systems. And uh, I'll have a better answer for you, Otto, once we brief the Secretary of Defense and that there's decisions that are made within the Department of the Navy. Those decisions have not been made yet. Mm -hmm.